got Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Adam Hills. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of two of the world's most powerful men getting to know each other on a golf cart. <laughs> but what does BCSR stand for? Is it Buggy Contains Stupid Redneck? <laughs> Is it Bush chooses Scottish Rent Boy? <laughs> Two very different yeah. terms. <laughs> is it Bush can't spell relationship? <laughs> is, it, is, is it blowjob cement special relationship? <laughs> is it, uh, is it Bush come in school? Rikes. <laughs> is it brilliant chance sniper required? <laughs> So the SR will be special relationship. SR will be special relationship, yes. Is it Brown continues special relationship? It is, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was looking for a word. Brown continues special relationship and refers to the new Prime Minister's visit to the United States this week where he reassured the White House that the UK's most important bilateral relationship would still be with America. Did you see the press conference? There was a really weird bit halfway through it when uh, one of the journalists said, What's the difference between Brown and Blair? And Bush said, aside from the toothpaste, and they both giggled at each other. Like they'd been, they'd been up all night having a midnight feast. <laughs> he also, very weirdly at one point, like we didn't know, he just he looked at Gordon Brown and went, He's a Scotsman, you know. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, we did know that, didn't we? And then it was, but he's not the dour Scotsman, he's not the awkward Scotsman. Yeah, who's that guy? That's uh, <laughs> he's the flying oh. Scotsman! <laughs> He said he was he is the humorous Scotsman. Yeah. Which must have pissed Billy Connolly off a lot. <laughs> and Frank Frank you uh, He doesn't Bush doesn't even know that that is pretty. He thinks that Tony Blair's put on weight and had a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> when he did the little the little loop de loop on his little buggy, did anyone see that? It was horrific. Yeah. You know, one in three uh, people in Iraq need emergency aid and he's like, I'ma do a loop de loop. <laughs> You know, I bet all day he was just doing that, uh, Gordon Brown was just kind of going, right, we've got to talk about Afghanistan. Pull my finger. Just stop him. <laughs> stop showing off. He's walking behind the sofa. I'm going down a lift. We have to talk about Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 stop it. Can you imagine any policy the Americans would come up with that was stupid enough that Britain wouldn't go along with it? We go along with, oh, we're going to build a 10-mile high sex gun so the Earth can mate with the moon. <laughs> Sounds like a fantastic idea, Josh. I think, I, you know, as an, as an outside observer, I think it's important that Britain has a relationship with America for this reason. That I watched Tony Blair over the last, you know, 12 months dealing with George W. Bush, kind of picking him up when he made mistakes at the G8 conference when, when Bush spoke, didn't realise his microphone was on and said, we've got to get Syria to stop Lebanon from doing this shit. And Blair stepped in. And then there was the press conference at the G8 summit where, where Bush kept trying to speak and Blair had to clarify what was being said, what he's trying to say. <laughs> he's, he was never his lapdog or his poodle. He was his carer. <laughs> he was following Bush around the world like Rain Man. He <laughs> <laughs> say, George, George, we need a UN resolution. Yeah, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> <laughs> that already Brown has spent too long with him because he's making up his own words. Or he was trying to say, I don't really like Americans, this is code. Because what he said was, I've always been an Atlanticist. Brilliant. What the hell is that? The Spider-Man's enemies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep How much do we confuse George Bush? Yeah. He go, hello, I'm an Atlanticist. <laughs> uh, like, oh, how do you breathe? Through <laughs> uh, so the entire weekend looking for Brown's gills. Uh, <laughs> Special relationship is quite a sort of creepy, sexy phrase, though, isn't it? Uh, it you like uh, a special relationship? To be honest, it's easy to say it like that, Frank. <laughs> yeah. Everything's quite creepy when you say it like that. Would you like a scone? <laughs> I'm particularly impressed by the way that you make, you put creepy and sexy together. It's kind of a creepy, sexy phrase. <laughs> the menu phrase that touches both those buttons for me. Uh, so yeah. They did get on very, very well, uh, apparently, or they claimed to get on very well in the nature of these. Although Brown actually didn't mention Bush at any stage after Bush mm. made lots of he's a, like did that whole he's not the door Scotsman he that you all write about which is such a, an mm. undermining thing to say it been when there's a world leader beside you and go hey this yeah. guy this guy's not an asshole hey. <laughs> they don't think you're an asshole which is essentially what that was <laughs> Gordon Brown got into America okay but how much others soon struggled to get into the US 
uh, new laws whereby you have to register online before you even like, leave the country. Yes. Like 48 hours in advance, you have to register America, online. You have to go online and tell them where you're going, yep. uh, where you're staying, and why you're going there. Oh, because you know? they are... Look, uh, we've mentioned it on this show before. I have an artificial foot. We have mentioned an artificial foot. And in fact, last foot, time yeah. I was on the show, I talked about going through English security, airport security. American security has gotten better over the last couple of years because they're diligent and polite at the same time. So last time I went through LA, I went through the metal detector and it went off and, you know, beep, and the guy came over and I was expecting a rough sound and he went, excuse me, sir, uh, do you have a prosthetic limb of any sort? And I went, um, yes. And he went, can I ask which limb it is? And he kind of went, <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry, uh, could you walk over? And he was so polite, could you put your foot up here, sir? So I got my foot up and he said, can, can you roll your jeans back? And I rolled them back and he said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think you'll find that to find sexy and creepy. <laughs> it's all sexy, I don't know. The guy then said, he said, okay, can I touch your leg, sir? I almost asked that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is my show and tell every time yeah. you're on. I, won't talk to you. yeah. I seem to remember last time he was on, it was the other leg. <laughs> then came out with this and said, Sir, I'm going to have to take a swab of the area where your prosthetic limb meets your actual leg to make sure there are no traces of explosives. I was like this close to going, oh, how do you think I lost it? <laughs> Adam, I don't know if there is like a one-legged community, but in the one-legged community, <laughs> how has Heather McCartney, has she kind of spoiled things for you? Because, <laughs> yeah, because you want to go with I thought, oh, I'd like anyone with one leg, why would I not? But now, I think twice. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for putting your leg away briefly. Who knows when it'll appear again? <laughs> In other politics news, why has a Lib Dem councillor from Devon hit the headlines? She's a, she's a liberal, liberal Democrat councillor, but she's also a sex worker, Dara. <laughs> she's not just a member of the mm. Lib Dems, she's a Lib Dem councillor. Uh, for Bidwell, is it? Yeah, Bidford. Bidford, excuse me. This is her, yeah. That's her. Uh, yeah. You'd vote for that, wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> What's funny about it, aside from this, this is a traditional get up. She also does the following, uh, if I get this right, she does Miss Whiplash, that's rubbish. She just turns up and goes, oh, my back. <laughs> and the, uh, the other one is Miss Santa, that is entirely creepy, isn't it? Um, and the final one is Sexy Gypsy Lady, which is just <laughs> hilarious, isn't it? Just the idea of someone in Devon going, hello? Is that sexy gypsy lady? <laughs> I'm worried about what do you think she plugs into these three sockets? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a chat line though. Yeah. Right, apparently one pound fifty a minute you can call up. Now if you ever call up your council, you never get through. How brilliant to know that you can definitely get through to one of your councillors you know, and you get a bit of sexy talk at the same time. I'd like to know about my planning permission. Ooh, you haven't got planning permission, you bad boy. I spank you. <laughs> more socially acceptable to be a sex worker than a Liberal Democrat. <laughs> and you know what, I've always thought the Devon accent to be the sexiest on a chat line. I, the amount of times I've wanted to hear someone say, oh, I'm not wearing any clothes, my lover. <laughs> <laughs> if only she would say that, though, you'll probably be trying to whack one off while she's telling you about proportional representation. <laughs> and I know from experience, that's a tough one. <laughs> Has anyone ever rang up a sex line? What were the chances that we were going to, you know, now the time to, you know, that I really want to share that? No, well, no, I haven't. Have you not, I did when I was 14, I got caught by my mum. Horrific. Um, <laughs> you know, I know yeah. this voice. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, get myself in trouble rather than my mum. <laughs> I was 14 and I was getting bullied at school and rather than, oh I don't know, learn karate, I used to ring up the sex line. I once had an argument with one, with one lady who, uh, I said, <laughs> would you do this to me? And she said, not if, no, I won't. I need you to do this to me first. And uh, I plucked out the courage to go, you'll do it to me. And do you know why, madam? Because the customer is always right. <laughs> To the death. Not really. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this game involves Adam, Andy, Frankie, and Joe. So if you can make your way to the performance area, please. 
This is where we test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and then you can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner's a team with the best stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first of it is television. Can I have a volunteer to... Oh, sure. Uh, you know, I... Okay, I've got to start off by saying I'm not approved, right? But have you seen some of the things that female newsreaders are dressed in? There was a woman the other night, right? She's got a very low cut top and she's doing a report on the Balkans. Suddenly, I'm like Sid James in the Carry On film. I was sitting there going, oh, I can practically see your Balkans from here. <laughs> Honestly, I had to turn over when she said she was going to show us downtown Basra. <laughs> Oh, the one that gets me, Natasha Kaplinsky. How much makeup is that woman wearing? I'm surprised she can lift her head off the desk. I'm just waiting for the day when it's, and today in Iraq. <laughs> okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is Australia. I might have a go at that. All right. Here comes Adam. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, you never see one Australian in a bar in the UK. It's always a group. Uh, uh, I don't know the collective term, uh, a, a yobbo. Uh, <laughs> and we, we attract other Aussies to us, and it's like watching a Geiger counter measure radioactivity. Because you see Australians meeting people in pubs just going, eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
<laughs> Is it how many free minutes would it take for me to sign up with T-Mobile again? <laughs> Is it the amount of paedophiles that the Daily Mail say are released from prison every day? <laughs> is, it, is it how much money is being lost by the Mormon musical 200 Brides for Seven Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> is it five fruit and veg a day are supposed to be good for you? What would be bad for you? <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a clue. Uh, it's, it's an online phenomenon. It's, it's Facebook, isn't it? It's how many, is it how many hits Facebook gets? It's not how many hits Facebook gets. It's how many uh, photos are uploaded on Facebook. Wow, very good. The question I was looking for is... <laughs> how many photographs are being uploaded onto internet phenomenon Facebook? The country's increasing obsession with the American fan is social networking website Facebook. The UK now has 4 million users and London has more Facebookers that's actually the term, uh, than any other city in the world. However, for all its popularity, the site is being banned by increasing numbers of employers and is said to be an easy target for snoopers and identity thieves. I am so happy to use the word snoopers. Yeah. Uh, that's great. As if there is a major new crime wave of snoopers going... Well, that's you need to be a snooper, my friend. Well, it's basically, it tells you when the relationship of one of your friends has actually changed. You know, and you've got certain friends whose relationship seems to change about three times a week. Whose status changes every day? I wake up a miserable bastard and I go to bed, bed as a miserable bastard. I'm not constantly changing from giggly to cautious. Certain <laughs> 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 these things, does yeah. nobody get laid anymore? <laughs> does nobody act, actually just meet people and, and shag them? <laughs> Is it a constant yeah. mountain of data and strangers? <laughs> well, presumably they do, but they do within reach of a computer so that they can actually update their status <laughs> midway through the act. Yeah. Dara is surging, surging. <laughs> Dara is spent. Uh, <laughs> I think you the Liberal get... Democrats in Biddeford have got a site called Sit on My Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> It's unlikely, isn't it? It is, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of young people generally and their pursuits, what other issue has been in the news this week for oh, young people? The whole thing of them drinking too much. They do, apparently. Yeah. The young people of Britain are drinking See, I too much. I don't understand really. this. You know, it's like young people have always drunk. You know, they talk about, like, binge drinking. You think, well, isn't binge drinking what we used to call drinking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are binging over two or three days. Didn't that used to be the weekend? <laughs> It, it, is, you do, it is a national trait. We don't do this in Ireland at all. We don't talk down the young generation in the way that they do. It is it's hilarious that any generation can give out about the young people. Look at them with their happy slapping. Wasn't like that in my day when we had football violence up and down the country yeah, every yeah. Saturday? Or in your grandfather's when he went down to Brighton with the rest of the mods and beat up some rockers because he didn't like their duck's arse haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Every generation here. Yeah, and they say we're a bit like the worst teenager in Europe ever. You think, really? I think the Hitler <laughs> Youth will yeah. maybe worse. <laughs> <laughs> No, they, they delivered a Pope. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> they did. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why we don't just address the whole problem with teenagers seriously and take the, the obvious solution of having more guest appearances by philosophers in Hollyoaks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a new pizza parlour opened in the, <laughs> the promenade. <laughs> yes, who's the owner? Why, it's Milan Condera. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy the olives and salami, but I'm overwhelmed by a sense of almost pointlessness. It's better than the usual excuse. It was like, bring back the cane, national service and all that. The last thing you need when your hormones are all over the shop is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> natural service was one of the, it, it didn't actually teach you anything, it just took you out of circulation during the particularly difficult years. Yeah, exactly. like, you might in prison all 19 year old men and then just left them out and go, we just didn't want you around for a while now. <laughs> now go back to your homes and family. You think they should, they, you know, I think they should bring back national service, but for old people, because they are the people that want it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh no, we're going to take bears, right? <laughs> So they're saying, oh, we've got the, the highest pregnancy rate in Europe. And I noticed the, the clear blue pregnancy test. They changed it now. It used to be, if it went blue, then you knew you were pregnant. Apparently, that was too tricky for some of our kids, right? It now says pregnant or not pregnant. <laughs> you going, oh, it's blue. What does that mean? Oh, I might give birth to a smurf, you know. <laughs>
And shouldn't, we shouldn't obviously bother with multicolored condoms. What we need is writing on the condom. You know, outside, inside, in here. That's what we really need. I always thought it'd be good if pregnancy tests had a, a joke on them, like a lollipop snip. <laughs> <laughs> It's not yours. Okay. <laughs> no, no, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have the start of the joke just written on the other one. And then, yeah. if you're pregnant, you got the punchline. Uh, <laughs> when is a door not a door? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing this is how it's done. <laughs> when is the jar? Oh, God, I'm pregnant. Uh, <laughs> why, why? They wouldn't be getting pregnant just to find out what the bloody punchline was. My wife has kept, for, the, for both our kids, my wife has kept the pregnancy testing kit that told her she was pregnant. So in a cupboard, there is a blue thing covered in my wife's urine. <laughs> That's going to surprise the burglars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bit of umbilical cord. My mum's got my right foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell John Andy! This round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, bloody royal visits. Uh, have you seen the bar? Is there a bar? <laughs> oh, the bar. Is in here? Is in here? Oh, <laughs> Just do here. Yeah, splendid. You know, the gym. What are you, uh, what are you cooking? Uh, <laughs> I uh, tell you what I like to eat. Uh, swan. Lovely swan. <laughs> Gold needle. I shoot some of them in uh, Balmoral. Man, you, I tell you what you need for that is a, a shotgun. Yes. <laughs> yes, a bloody big one. <laughs> yeah. I say. You, uh, <laughs> can I just say, you really do have a terrific pair of norks. <laughs> they are. My goodness. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, so, sorry to mention them again. <laughs> Magnificent. Do you, uh, are they your own or? <laughs> What's this? Oh, chicken, is it? Oh, lovely, yes. I play this at Sandringham. Uh, uh, level five. I, uh, I tell you what you have to do. Kick them, kick them. <laughs> That's what you have to do. Oh, dear. No, you've, you've balls that up. Oh, no. oh look out. It's the fathers. Yes. I didn't know. I didn't know it was an osprey. I, I, so, are you uh, are you a strip again? Or. or <laughs> I tell you what I saw earlier. There's a woman in the kitchen who has a terrific pair of norks. So, oh, look, lovely, a DVD, yes. Yes, my favourite. Normally I have to go to Holland to buy these. <laughs> well, goodbye. goodbye. Do one, son. Yes. yes, well, goodbye. No, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> Welcome to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. The first subject is... On likely lines to hear on a science programme. After working on the equation for 30 years, Professor Stevens made an incredible discovery. His wife had left him and he'd wasted his life. <laughs> The trade in human organs is shocking. This kidney cost me nearly a tenner. Today, we're going to be making a bomb using japati flour and hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> but she's faster. A dog got a crossbow bolt. <laughs> and that's how God created the world in seven days. <laughs> I escaped from a petri dish! <laughs> Hello, my name's Jade Goody. <laughs> and that is how we can prove that aluminium is gay. <laughs> <laughs> a cure for acute depression may be just around the corner. Oh, here it is. A train. <laughs> And as the mighty lion shakes the life out of this tiny gazelle, I feel strangely horny. <laughs> well, that test was conclusive. Cats have one life. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next up again. Questions omitted from the British citizenship test. <laughs> Can you fly a plane? <laughs> Can you land a plane? <laughs> Pat Butcher.
it. She goes, shall I go tell him? <laughs> Do you ever look at the ingredients and ready, steady cook and <laughs> think, I could make a bomb out of that? <laughs> Is there any chance you could represent us in the 2012 Olympics? <laughs> in which case, you're in. <laughs> Boris Johnson, true or false? <laughs> Do you like the music of Shawada? What is On this map of Britain, can you point to where Gloucester used to be? <laughs> Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> Show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Adam Hills. <laughs> Congratulations to Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield, and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you next week. Good night. So coming next on BBC Two, York is in big trouble in the bubble. Hyperdrive is on the way. Then Jack and Victor feel some long-forgotten urges. It's still game at ten. Parsons, Joe Caulfield, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Adam Hills. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of two of the world's most powerful men getting to know each other on a golf cart. <laughs> but what does BCSR stand for? Is it Buggy Contains Stupid Redneck? <laughs> Is it Bush chooses Scottish rent boy? <laughs> Two very different yeah. terms. <laughs> is it Bush can't spell relationship? <laughs> is, it, is, is it blowjob cements special relationship? <laughs> is it, uh, is it Bush come in school? Ripes. <laughs> is it brilliant chance sniper required? <laughs> So the SR will be special relationship. SR will be special relationship, yes. Is it Brown continues special relationship? It is, of course. Brown, Brown, Brown. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Brown continues special relationship and refers to the new Prime Minister's visit to the United States this week where he reassured the White House that the UK's most important bilateral relationship would still be with America. Did you see the press conference? There was a really weird bit halfway through it when uh, one of the journalists said, What's the difference between Brown and Blair? And Bush said, aside from the toothpaste, and they both giggled each other. Like they'd been, they'd been up all night having a midnight feast. <laughs> he also, very weirdly at one point, like we didn't know, he just he looked at Gordon Brown and went, he's a Scotsman, you know. <laughs> yeah, we did know, though, didn't we? <laughs> with, but he's not the dour Scotsman, he's not the awkward Scotsman. Yeah, who's that guy? Uh, <laughs> he's the flying oh. Scotsman. <laughs> He said, he said he was he is the humorous Scotsman. Yeah. Which must have pissed Billy Connolly off a lot. <laughs> and Frank, thank you for He doesn't, Bush doesn't even know that that is bright. He thinks that Tony Blair's put on weight and had a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> when he did the little the little loop de loop on his little buggy, did anyone see that? It was horrific. Yeah. You know, one in three uh, people in Iraq need emergency aid, and he's like, I'm going to do a loop de loop. <laughs> You know, I bet all day he's just doing that, uh, Gordon Brown was just kind of going, right, we've got to talk about Afghanistan. Pull my finger. Just stop. <laughs> stop showing off. He's walking behind the sofa. I'm going down a lift. We have to talk about Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 stop it. Can you imagine any policy that the Americans would come up with that was stupid enough that Britain wouldn't go along with it? 
we go along, oh, we're going to build a 10-mile-high sex gun so the Earth can mate with the moon. <laughs> well, that sounds like a fantastic yeah. idea, George. Yeah. I think, I, you know, as an, as an outside observer, I think it's important that Britain has a relationship with America for this reason, that I watched... Tony Blair over the last, you know, 12 months dealing with George W. Bush, kind of picking him up when he made mistakes at the G8 conference when, when Bush spoke, didn't realise his microphone was on and said, we've got to get Syria to stop never on from doing this shit. And Blair stepped in. And then there was a press conference uh, at the G8 summit where, where Bush kept trying to speak and Blair had to clarify what was being said, what he's trying to say. <laughs> he's, he was never his lapdog or his poodle. He was his carer. <laughs> he was following Bush around the world like Rain Man. <laughs> You say, George, George, we need a UN resolution. Yeah, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> I, did, I worry that already Brown has spent too long with him because he's making up his own words. Or he was trying to say, I don't really like Americans, this is code. Because what he said was, I've always been an Atlanticist. Brilliant. What the hell is that? They're Spider-Man's enemies. <laughs> it's a deep How much do you confuse George Bush yeah. you go, hello, I'm an Atlanticist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how do you breathe? <laughs> So the entire weekend looking for Brown's gills. And, uh, <laughs> Special relationship is quite a sort of creepy, sexy phrase, though, isn't it? Uh, it you like uh, a special relationship? Uh, you know, it's easy to say it like that, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's quite creepy when you say it like that. Would you like a scone? <laughs> I'm particularly impressed by the way that you make, you put creepy and sexy together. It's kind of a creepy, sexy phrase. <laughs> many phrase that touches both those buttons for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah. They did get on very, very well, uh, apparently, or they claimed to get on very well in the nature of these things. Although Brown actually didn't mention Bush at any stage. After Bush mm. made lots of, he's a, like, did that whole, he's not the door Scotsman. He, that you all write about, which is such a, an mm. undermining thing to say. It would have been When close. there's a world leader beside you and go, hey, this yeah. guy, this guy's not an asshole. Hey. <laughs> they don't think you're an asshole, which is essentially what that was. <laughs> Gordon Brown got into America, okay, but how might others soon struggle to get into the US? Uh, new laws whereby you have to register online before you even like, leave the country. Yes, like 48 hours in 48 advance hours to register America, online. You have to go online and tell them where you're going, yep. uh, where you're staying, and why you're going there. Oh, because you know? they are. Look, uh, we've mentioned it on this show before. I have an artificial foot. We have mentioned an artificial foot. In fact, last foot, time yeah. I was on the show, I talked about going through English security, airport security. American security has gotten better over the last couple of years because they're diligent and polite at the same time. So last time I went through LA, I went through the metal detector and it went off and, you know, beep, and the guy came over and I was expecting a rough sound and he went, excuse me, sir, uh, do you have a prosthetic limb of any sort? I went, um, yes. And he went, can I ask which limb it is? And he's kind of like, <laughs> 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 and he, oh, I'm sorry, uh, could you walk over it? And he was so polite, could you put your foot up here, sir? So I got my foot up and he said, can, can you roll your jeans back? And I rolled them back and he said, uh, <laughs> I think you'll find that to find sexy and creepy. <laughs> it's all sexy, Adam. <laughs> the guy then said, he said, okay, can I touch your leg, sir? I almost asked that question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is like show and tell every time yeah. you're on. I, want to <laughs> yeah. I seem to remember last time he was on, it was the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> then came out with this and said, Sir, I'm going to have to take a swab of the area where your prosthetic limb meets your actual leg to make sure there are no traces of explosives. I was like this close to going, oh, how do you think I lost it? <laughs> Adam, I don't know if there is like a one-legged community, but in the one-legged community, <laughs> how has Heather McCartney, has she kind of spoiled things for you? <laughs> yeah, because you want to go I would always thought, oh, I'd like anyone with one leg, why would I not? But now, I think twice. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for putting your leg away briefly. Who knows when it'll appear again? Uh, in other politics news, why has a Lib Dem councillor from Devon hit the headlines? She's a, she's a liber Liberal Democrat councillor, but she's also a sex worker, Dara. <laughs> she's not just a member of the mm. Lib Dems, she's a Lib Dem councillor. Uh, for Bidwell, is it? Bidford. Yeah, Bidford. Bidford, 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 excuse me. This is her, yeah. That's she's her. Uh, yeah. You'd vote for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> What's funny about it, aside from this, this is a traditional get up. She also does the following, uh, if I get this right, she does Miss Whiplash, that's rubbish. She just turns up and goes, oh, my back. <laughs> and the, uh, the other one is Miss. <laughs>
And joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Adam Hills. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of two of the world's most powerful men getting to know each other on a golf cart. <laughs> but what does BCSR stand for? Is it Buggy Contains Stupid Redneck? <laughs> Is it Bush chooses Scottish rent boy? <laughs> Two very different yeah. terms. <laughs> is it Bush can't spell relationship? <laughs> is, it, is it blowjob cement special relationship? <laughs> is it, uh, is it Bush come in school? Rikes. <laughs> is it brilliant chance sniper required? <laughs> So the SR will be special relationship. SR will be special relationship, yes. Is it Brown continues special relationship? It is, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Dan Brown is looking for a world Brown continues special relationship and refers to the new Prime Minister's visit to the United States this week where he reassured the White House that the UK's most important bilateral relationship would still be with America. Did you see the press conference? There was a really weird bit halfway through it when uh, one of the journalists said, what's the difference between Brown and Blair? And Bush said, aside from the toothpaste, and they both giggled at each other. Like they'd been, they'd been up all night having a midnight feast. <laughs> he also said very weirdly at one point, like we didn't know, he just he looked at Gordon Brown and went, He's a Scotsman, you know. <laughs> yeah, we did know that, didn't we? And was, but he's not the dour Scotsman. He's not the awkward Scotsman. Yeah, who's that guy? That's uh, <laughs> he's the flying oh. Scotsman. <laughs> he said he was, he's the humorous Scotsman. Yeah. Which must have pissed Billy Connolly off a lot. <laughs> and Frank, thank you for it. He doesn't, Bush doesn't even know that that is, Brian. He thinks that Tony Blair's put on weight and had a mild stroke. <laughs> <laughs> when he did the little the little loop-de-loop -loop on his little buggy, did anyone see that? It was horrific. Yeah. You know, one in three uh, people in Iraq need emergency aid, and he's like, I'm going to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet all day he was just doing that. Uh, Gordon Brown was just kind of going, right, we've got to talk about Afghanistan. Pull my finger. Just stop him. <laughs> stop showing off. He's walking behind the sofa. I'm going down a lift. We have to talk about Afghanistan. <laughs> Like Stop it! <laughs> Can you imagine any policy that the Americans would come up with that was stupid enough that Britain wouldn't go along with it? We go along with, oh, we're going to build a 10 mile high sex gun so the Earth can mate with the moon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a fantastic yeah. idea, Josh. Yeah. I think, I, you know, as an, as an outside observer, I think it's important that Britain has a relationship with America for this reason. That I watched. Tony Blair over the last, you know, 12 months dealing with George W. Bush, kind of picking him up when he made mistakes at the G8 conference when, when Bush spoke, didn't realise his microphone was on and said, we've got to get serious and stop never known from doing this shit. And Blair stepped in. And then there was a press conference at the G8 summit where, where Bush kept trying to speak and Blair had to clarify what was being said, what he's trying to say. <laughs> he's, he was never his lapdog or his poodle. He was his carer. <laughs> he was following Bush around the world like Rain Man. <laughs> You say, George, George, we need a UN resolution. Yeah, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> I worry I mean, that already Brown has spent too long with him because he's making up his own words. Or he was trying to say, I don't really like Americans, this is code. Because what he said was, I've always been an Atlanticist. Brilliant. What the hell is that? They're Spider Man's enemies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep How much you confuse George Bush yeah. you go, Hello, I'm an Atlanticist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, how do you breathe? <laughs> So the entire week are looking for Brown's gills. Uh, <laughs> Special relationship is quite a sort of creepy, sexy phrase, though, isn't it? Uh, it you like uh, a special relationship? To be honest, it's easy to say it like that, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's quite creepy when you say it like that. Would you like a scone? <laughs> I'm particularly impressed by the way that you make, you put creepy and sexy together. It's kind of a creepy, sexy phrase. <laughs> the many phrase that touches both those buttons for me. Uh, so that. But they did get on very, very well, uh, apparently, or they claimed to get on very well in the nature of these. Although Brown actually didn't mention Bush at any stage after Bush mm. made lots of he's a, like did that whole he's not the door Scotsman he that you all write about which is such a, an mm. undermining thing to say it been when there's a world leader beside you and go hey this yeah. guy this guy's not an asshole hey. <laughs> they don't think you're an asshole which is essentially what that was <laughs> going back into America okay but how much others soon struggle to get into the US 
uh, new laws whereby you have to register online before you even like, leave the country. Yes. Like 48 hours in advance, you have to register America, online. You have to go online and tell them where you're going, yep. uh, where you're staying, and why you're going there. Oh, because you know? they are... Look, uh, we've mentioned it on this show before. I have an artificial foot. We have mentioned an artificial foot. And in fact, last foot, time yeah. I was on the show, I talked about going through English security, airport security. American security has gotten better over the last couple of years because they're diligent and polite at the same time. So last time I went through LA, I went through the metal detector and it went off and, you know, beep, and the guy came over and I was expecting a rough sound and he went, excuse me, sir, uh, do you have a prosthetic limb of any sort? And I went, um, yes. And he went, can I ask which limb it is? And I kind of went, yeah. <laughs> and he, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you walk over? And he was so polite. Could you put your foot up here, sir? So I've got my foot up. And he said, can, can you roll your jeans back? And I rolled them back. And he said, uh, <laughs> I think you'll find that to find sexy and creepy. <laughs> it's all sexy, I don't know. The guy then said, he said, okay, can I touch your leg, sir? I almost asked that question. Yeah. Yeah. This is my like show and tell every time yeah. you're on. I, want to yeah. Yeah. I seem to remember last time he was on, it was the other leg. <laughs> then came out with this and said, Sir, I'm going to have to take a swab of the area where your prosthetic limb meets your actual leg to make sure there are no traces of explosives. I was like this close to going, oh, how do you think I lost it? <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if there is like a one-legged community, but in the one-legged community, <laughs> how has Heather McCartney, has she kind of spoiled things for you? Because, <laughs> yeah, because you want to go with I thought, oh, I'd like anyone with one leg, why would I not? But now, I think twice. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, for putting your leg away briefly. Who knows when it'll appear again? <laughs> In other politics news, why has a Lib Dem councillor from Devon hit the headlines? She's a, she's a liberal, liberal Democrat councillor, but she's also a sex worker, Dara. <laughs> she's not just a member of the <clears throat> Lib Dems, she's a Lib Dem councillor. Uh, for Bidwell, is it? Bidford. Yeah, Bidford. 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 Is that sexy gypsy lady? <laughs> I'm worried about what do you think she plugs into these three sockets? <laughs> She's got a chat line though. Yeah. Right, apparently one pound fifty a minute you can call up. Now if you ever call up your council, you never get through. How brilliant to know that you can definitely get through to one of your councillors. You know, and you get a bit of sexy talk at the same time. I'd like to know about my planning permission. Ooh, you haven't got planning permission, you bad boy. I spank you, I spank you. more socially acceptable to be a sex worker than a liberal democrat <laughs> and you know i've always thought the devon accent to be the sexiest on a chat line I, the amount of times i've wanted to hear someone say oh i'm not wearing any clothes my lover <laughs> <laughs> if only she would say that though you'll probably be trying to whack one off while she's telling you about proportional representation <laughs> and i know from experience that's a tough one <laughs> has anyone ever rang up a sex line Chances that we're going to, you know, now the time to, you know, that I really want to share that. No, well, no, I haven't. Have you not? I did when I was 14, I got caught by my mum. Horrific. Um, <laughs> you know this voice. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, get myself in trouble rather than my mum. <laughs> I was 14 and I was getting bullied at school and rather than, oh I don't know, learn karate, I used to ring up the sex line. I once had an argument with one, with one lady who, uh, <laughs> I said, would you do this to me? And she said, not if, no, I won't. I need you to do this to me first. And uh, I plucked out the courage to go, you'll do it to me. And do you know why, madam? Because the customer is always right. <laughs> and, uh, that's, uh, there you go, yeah.